Hi and welcome back to the channel, my name is Dr. Downey and today we're going to be discussing prolactin and more specifically how you can decrease prolactin levels without the use of a dopamine agonist or dopaminergic such as bromocryptine, cabergoline, any of those. So the reason I want to spread news about how to decrease um, prolactin without the use of these drugs is because they're quite um, they have a lot of interactions with other drugs and have quite serious side effects and shouldn't be used long term if not needed. Um, whilst it might not be known to a lot of individuals, but estrogen plays a major role in prolactin levels. Um, it's actually quite a, it's a known medical fact and you'll see in many uh, medical textbooks that one of the factors that increase prolactin levels is estrogen and it seems that there are estrogen receptors on the pituitary that stimulate um, this production. Um, so with that in mind we'll discuss possible ways of decreasing prolactin. So the first um, compound we're going to discuss is masteron or drostanolone and the studies behind it as a way of decreasing um, prolactin levels. So uh, for those who don't know, drostanolone or masteron is actually thought to be an anti-estrogen or have anti-estrogenic effects. Whilst this is not fully true, there is partial truth in it, um, but we'll discuss that later with other studies. Um, so uh, in this one study that um, looked at drostanolone propionate in, um, in reducing plasma prolactin levels within rats, and these rats were orchidectomized, which means their ovaries were rem removed and they were given estrogen. And in these rats, they, the estrogen was used to stimulate prolactin levels, which occurred, and then in, uh, in two other groups, they gave masteron uh, uh, with cyclic imide and cyclic imide by itself, which does inhibit prolactin, and it would have been better if the masteron had been tested by itself, but yeah, this... This is an old study. So I'll show the different groups. There's a control group, the cyclic imide group, and the one with masteron and cyclic imide. And if you calculate the dose they were using in trial applied to humans, it comes out to about 200 milligrams of masteron propionate weekly if it were to be extrapolated and used in humans. So these are the results. As you can see, group C is the group we're interested in because we're looking at masteron. And you can see there is a decreasing trend, there's a massive decrease after a week, and it seems to continue to decrease. And around the third week, it's kind of stabilized. And as you can see, the p-values indicate that this is a significant and clinically significant decrease of prolactin levels. So it just, and as you can see in group A, where there was no... Um, uh, no, nothing was used, you'll see that there's a decrease. It would have been nicer if the masteron was used by itself, but that's fine. So it does possibly have an ability to decrease prolactin levels. Um, so this made me ponder whether it's... Because I, I, I know that prolactin interferes with the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, which decreases DHT in return, that perhaps using DHT compounds, and more specifically DHT derivatives, which I'll show on screen, that perhaps using that may interfere with prolactin levels. And I did find a study in which DHT treatment markedly lowered serum prolactin, which does perhaps indicate that other DHT derivatives might have a similar effect as Masteron, but this is all hypothetical because there aren't many studies on this. So here is another study in which I uh, found that um, DHT seemed to inhibit prolactin. Um, 
and um, um, so so it was initially thought that um, testosterone was uh, the cause of high prolactin levels in people treated with testosterone but it was actually the fact that estrogen was and this is where estrogen as a stimulatory factor was uh, or that hypothesis was formulated um, furthermore they found that when DHT derivatives worked alongside these dopamine agonists that they improved the potency of the dopamine agonists um, at a lower dose so you wouldn't need to use such a high dose so um, so that uh, so my theory was that Mastron essentially works as a selective estrogen receptor modul modulator and you'll see now why and that's how it decreases the prolactin because in studies with Arimidex, they found that Arimidex had no influence over the prolactin, and it's recorded in multiple studies that it doesn't influence prolactin levels. Maybe one study I came across did, but there were more um, stronger studies in which were actually conducted in human that showed it didn't. However, as you'll see, I'll display uh, some studies regarding tamoxifen or Nolvidex, and which is a serum or selective estrogen receptor modulator and its ability to decrease prolactin. And as you can see, at 20 milligrams a day of tamoxifen for five, uh, 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 treatment for five days, there's a significant reduction of about 20% uh, um, in the serum prolactin levels. So this indicates that um, whilst arimidex or aromatase inhibitors don't have an effect, it seems that by blocking or modulating the estrogen receptor, there seems to be a larger effect. And this would indicate that perhaps Masteron works in this ability, because it is known that Masteron isn't an aromatase inhibitor, but they I've never seen it being reported as a serum necessarily, but this would possibly um, prove that it could possibly be a serum. I have seen some uh, individuals try to say if you decrease your estrogen levels, you can theoretically decrease your serum prolactin possibly which would make sense because estrogen seems to stimulate these receptors but it seems that by modulating re these receptors there's more of an influence and that in order not to have any prolactin there was a study where they took rats without ovaries so they barely had any estrogen and they didn't have High, uh, high or they had minimal prolactin levels. So this would suggest that in order for Arimidex to work in the context of decreasing your prolactin, you'd have to essentially decrease your, uh, make sure your estrogen is barely, is um, barely detectable on, let's say, a blood test. So that would make me recommend a serum instead of um, Arimidex in order to control your prolactin levels. And we have something like Masteron, which seems to have this ability. No other DHT derivatives do, but um, that's because there aren't many studies to that effect because Masteron was obviously looked at for its abilities in influencing hormones important to women. Um, but there is a theory, a theory that perhaps all DHT derivatives could influence prolactin. However, Mastron is the only one with a study showing uh, significant decreases in prolactin. So there are other natural uh, methods of decreasing um, prolactin, which I'll display. There's a Reddit page which talks about it, and um, 
However, I'll discuss it possibly in another video, but I'm not sure of the science behind it. I haven't looked at them, but these are obviously other methods you could use if you are not controlling your prolactin and you don't want to use a harmful agent like a dopamine agonist. Um, thank you for watching this video. It may have been a bit confusing at times, because <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it, and like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.